one thing I want to put out to our audience real quick is a lot of us kids, we were not formally trained in the art of professional wrestling. But you had done some work with and had been in contact with a very renowned trainer. And you would train us as we ran. Yes. Um, so, the, you know, when we did our first event, the one you came to, May 9th, at the Army, that was about 350 fans. Not as big as this crowd, but not, not a small crowd either. Right. That was our first event, and... A guy by the name of Jim Mitchell showed up at that event. Now, if people don't know who Jim Mitchell is, in the AWA, he wrestled as the Iron Duke. He was, a, he was an old wrestler. He had this, like, he had missing a few fingers, and he had this this kind of this glove thing he wore. Anyways, I only knew him as the Iron Duke, and I was like, somebody's saying, yeah, the Iron Duke's here, the Iron Duke's here. And so everybody went out and met him, and I thought, that's interesting. So I thought maybe the AWA sent him. I thought he still worked for the AWA. But apparently he didn't, and he just showed up because he was curious. Shortly after that event, Steve wanted to go meet Eddie Sharkey, and I said, who's Eddie Sharkey? I was so naive back then, Dave. I didn't know who Eddie Sharkey was. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I knew what I was doing with the NWF, right? I was so involved with it that I kind of just didn't pay attention to the inner workings at you know, 14, 15 years old. So right. anyways, Steve explained it to me, and I think Steve wanted to get in with Eddie because he knew that he could get into the what Eddie was doing, which was the normal independent wrestling with the big guys. And I think Steve well, wanted to get in with him with them. So anyways, he long story short, he he wanted to go and meet up with Eddie Sharkey, and um, we did. And and Eddie had by this time he. The news, you know, news like event, when you hold 350 fans at an event at the Oak Armory, that news gets out in the wrestling community in the area. Eddie had heard of our event. So when he heard that guys from the NWF were here, he immediately wanted to meet us. So we met with Eddie in the back room at some little bar card he was doing in Fridley. And uh, Eddie was just, couldn't have been more welcoming to us. Open arms. And the first thing he said, Dave, was, you and I, we got to do an event together sometime. And that's the that's the rep, that that is what what people thought of us back then. That's how it's so different today, Dave. Backyard wrestling has given such a black eye. But but back in the eighties when backyard wrestling didn't exist, there was nothing to compare us to. You know back, back to your comment though with Eddie. So, you know, after I met Eddie and got to meet him, I got to know him and I spent a lot of time at his training camp. A lot of time there. I would just show up and we'd bullshit for hours. And he would help me and fix, you know, I would show him some of how our technique and how we're doing it. And he would correct me and show me what I was doing wrong. Because we were doing things, I would say, 80% correct. But then there was that other 20% of, you know, working off the right or working off your left. And it just different things. And Eddie would correct. I remember Eddie specifically corrected my flying head scissors move. He showed me how to do it properly. I give him credit for that. And I took all that knowledge to you guys. All right, Dr. 